came all the way down to Virginia to meet up today with Patrick and Ben of Rare Genetics. If you don't know who they are, they're on the cutting edge of reptile genetic testing. This is the place that you can mail your snake's shed skin to in order to have it DNA tested to see what gender it is. They're also developing other cool tests from shed skins like morph testing. So we're gonna go inside and see how this all works. I'm here with Dr. Ben Morrill and Dr. Patrick McKnight from Rare Genetics. And in a nutshell, as owner operator, I suppose, um, what does Rare Genetics do? So we are focused on developing genetic tests in reptiles. To this point, we've focus mostly on doing sex determination from shed skins. And you guys have so many tests that you either have currently available, like sex determination, as well as tests that are currently in development, like morph testing and even locale testing. But let's start with sex determination in reptiles. How do you tell using this shed skin from a snake if it's a male or a female? And amazingly, with technology now, we're able to just take you know one of these little pieces of shed, like a single scale here, belly scale. That's all we need. And from that, we'll extract the DNA from it. And then we will use polymerase chain reaction or PCR to be able to uh, amplify up DNA from the sex chromosomes. And then we'll be able to tell whether it's from a boy or from a girl. You may have noticed that Patrick's shirt is a very popular meme. And and that tortoise actually belongs to Patrick. Can you explain <laughs> the meme? Yeah, so the tortoise in the shirt is name is Mega Turtle. It's actually a rescue we got yeah, years ago. Uh, two years ago, while we were renovating the building that he normally lives in, he was roaming our house and was really upset that we left to go get lunch. And when my wife and I got home, we couldn't find him anywhere in the house. And as we went down the hall and looked in the bathroom, we found that apparently he had picked a fight with the commode and literally ripped it out of the floor. And it was just looking there wondering why we were upset with him. And also he was a little upset that there's no toilet paper on the toilet paper roll. We actually think that's why he <laughs> probably got rid of the commode. It's really hard to see. It's right there, guys. But I promise there was no toilet paper there. I just love how that's a hugely famous meme yeah. online and that tortoise belongs to you. Like, it, that is your meme. Like, one of my greatest moments. And he has a PhD. <laughs> and he has a PhD. <laughs> anyway, um, back to sex determination of shed skins, which is, I guess, what this whole video is about, is shed skin genetic testing. Can you explain step by step what you do to determine the sex? As Ben already said, like we use PCR to be able to amplify the DNA to be able to actually determine what sex it is. It's a multi-step process that we go through. So the initial step that we do is we actually take one scale that contains thousands of cells and those thousands of cells contain DNA. And so we actually do, we'll take the scale, put it into a solution that explodes the cells so that all the DNA is released. Once we've re released that DNA and removed all of the stuff we don't need, we're then able to actually load it into a machine called a thermocycler, which then takes that DNA and amplifies it using something we call primers, which are specific little sequences of DNA that allow us to target a specific region of the DNA we're interested in. After a set amount of time, we then take those samples and we run them on something called an agros gel, which is essentially a matrix that allows us to separate the DNA we amplified by the size that it is and let us determine whether or not it is male or a female. So you've got it all set up for the sex determination test. What is going on in there, actually? <laughs> so right now, what's happening, this is generating electricity. So the negative pole is here, positive here, and DNA is negatively charged. So as the, the charge is separated by these two poles, the negatively charged DNA is gonna move this way. And as it moves, the gel is a, a matrix. And so as the DNA is moving through, smaller pieces of DNA will move faster than larger pieces. And so in this case the female band is smaller than the male band on the sex chromosomes any female samples that that band will move faster than the male band and that male band is in both males and females so in humans that would be like the X chromosome is in males and females in the case of colubrid snakes they actually have ZW chromosomes and so the female has a Z and a W the male is ZZ female ZW so the larger band is going to be the Z band that will be in both males and females and then the W band is the smaller band that will move faster through the gel and so that's the way we'll be able to tell if we see the Z and the W band we know it's a female if we only see the Z band we know it's a male I see so you're looking for the presence of one or two bands and that's essentially because they're different sizes they're getting separated based on size so okay that's that's really neat so yep. if we see two bands here we've got a female yep okay one band male all right it's been about 30 minutes and it looks like all the DNA has now separated so what do you do next so next what, what we can 
can see right now is that the dye has moved down to the bottom, so we know that that's given the DNA a chance to separate. Uh, but we can't see that right here, so now we'll take this to an imager. You can't see the DNA with our naked eye, but with dye and, and the imager, you'll be able to see those bands, whether we get two for a female or one for a male. And here are the results. On the left-hand side, we have the DNA from the shed skin sample that we've been testing this entire time. And on the right-hand side is DNA from a known female snake. So Ben, can you explain what we're looking at here? This tells us our shed we ran today is a male. So now we know. So on this this side, you have a single band. That's the, the Z band. And that single bright band tells us that's a male. And then this female one we put next to it is just to show what the W band looks like. So you have a, in females, they have a Z and a W. And so here's the Z in a female and the W is really nice and bright. That's a very obvious difference between the two. So it's a boy. So the sex determination test is available available for all colubrids and all venomous snakes right now, but not pythons and boas, correct? Right. So what makes pythons and boas different that you are unable to, and probably are working on it right now, but just at the moment can't provide tests for them? Yeah, so we are working on pythons specifically right now. The reason why it's more difficult is in the colubrids and venomous snakes, their sex chromosomes are very different. So the Z is much larger than the W, so there's lots of differences between those two sex chromosomes for us to be able to design a test that can show that difference in the banding. Whereas with pythons and boas as well, the pythons we're working on, their sex chromosomes look identical. So when you do like a chromosome spread karyotype, you look at those chromosomes, the DNA that looks the same. The differences between a male and a female sex chromosome in pythons and boas is much smaller than this difference that there is in the venomous and the colubrid snakes. Do you think eventually there will be a way found to still do the testing for boas and pythons? 100%. Yes. Okay. 100%. Yeah, we'll get it. Hopefully within the next three to six months, we'll have it for at least some pythons. So I know you don't work just with snakes. You're working with lizards too. What is there as far as sexing tests for lizard sheds? So that's another thing we're working on, especially for blue tongue skinks and heliderma, and then also for monitor species. A lot of those are ones. really hard to tell visually yes. what sex they are. So having a shed test available would be amazing. Right. We're working on it. Well, that pretty much covers the sexing side of rare genetics, but now you're going above and beyond and you're working with the development of morph tests for the future, right? Yep. And that would be groundbreaking in the reptile world. So can you explain what you're working towards right now with that? Yeah, so we have a reptile morph sequencing project that we're doing. We're going to start with ball pythons, but it's something that we would like to do in many species of reptiles. And in doing that, we're going to sequence the whole genomes of these species. Some, many of these have never been done before and the ones that are closest to them are sometimes very distantly related. So so it'll be a lot of genetic information that researchers can use for lots of different types of projects. With that whole genome sequencing of these reptile species, the part we want to go forward in is then to use that information to look for specific morphs that are in reptiles. So like for instance, in ball pythons where we'll be starting, we'll be able to have tests to be able to tell if something is het for albino or het for pied or something like that. But then once we have those developed, we want to move into corn snakes or hognose or you know other, other species as well. So you're going to create, or you're going to sequence the genome of, say, a ball python to have as a reference genome, and then from there you can figure out where the mutations occur. Right. So that's how you can test to see if a ball python carries that gene or is even het for that gene. Correct. And this is just amazing research that you're doing because this is groundbreaking for the reptile community. Because if you're, say, a breeder and you produce ball pythons, like a clutch of ball pythons that are pos het for a very fancy expensive morph, you could have them genetically tested with their shed and you would know then if you have a $50 normal or a $2,000 het that morph and that would just make a huge difference in the breeding hobby as a whole, wouldn't it? This potentially is a paradigm shift as breeders where we don't have to worry about pairing head to heads or triple heads to triple heads and producing all these animals that we have to hold on to for years and years to hopefully prove out at some point. Now we can hatch them do our genetic tests and know exactly what we have and sell those animals as heads with confidence as well with genetic testing that we can back up. This just occurred to me too. You could also, if you bought a pos het something snake from a breeder and you're not sure if you trust, you could have them tested right then and there and you would know for sure if they actually do carry that gene or not. 100%. Instead of raising 100%. them up for three years and finding out they're not. That's it. <laughs> right, because if you have a female that's pos het, that's going to determine what male you pair her with. So you could have her then tested to see if she does carry 
carry it, and that will probably change your mind or make up your mind on what male to pair her with because you might be risking a clutch of eggs that are just all normal if she doesn't prove out. Heck. It saves time, money, and effort. There's so much involved yeah. in this. Like this yeah. is this could really change the entire hobby. Very, very exciting. Breeding, trying to prove out possets by breeding is gonna be a thing of the past, hopefully by the end of the year. And really the big things that have made it so it's possible to do it right now, one is that sequencing costs have come down quite a bit. And then also we have a collaboration that we recently set up with the Genome Research Center at Hudson Alpha Institute, and they are very experienced in doing this kind of sequencing and and also being able to pull out genetic differences that then lead to some kind of a trait, and in this case, color and pattern mutations. And so those two things coming together are really what's making this possible right now. And you also have a GoFundMe page for your reptile morph sequencing project, right? right. So yeah. people can contribute to this research and development of the sequencing and the tests themselves. So if you wanna help this project keep moving forward, please go check out their GoFundMe page. And I think there's even a notes section and once you donate, you can like add a yes. little note so people could include what they would like to see developed as far as tests go in the future. Sure, yeah, we know not everybody is into ball pythons. There's a lot of other species out there that are really cool. We wanna know what species you're interested in so we can focus on those. I, would, I know I would love to see if we have a possibly het lavender hognose snake. Okay. So that would be amazing to know Absolutely. if he was actually het or not because that would determine what female I'm gonna pair him with. So I'm very excited for the development of this test and the sequencing in general. And I'm so excited for you guys too. This is gonna blow up. Super exciting. Yeah. So if somebody watching is interested in sending a shed skin sample in for, in the future, morph testing, which should be ready this summer, right? Hopefully, at least some yeah, time. So yeah. actually pretty soon. Yeah. But for right now, sex determination tests are available. How do they send in their shed? So the, the first thing that you do when you have a, a shed that you wanna send in, go ahead and go on our website, regeneticsinc.com, and uh, pick if it's for a colubrid. There's a colubrid test that will work for any colubrids or the venomous snakes. Pay for that and then you'll get an order number and you can either print that off or you can just hand write, if you don't have a printer, you can hand write that order number and, and your name so that we'll know what shed that's associated with so we can get you your information back. So once you have that piece of paper with the order number, you can just fold it. If you're just sending one shed in, you can just fold it inside of that, put it in a normal envelope and send it via normal mail. Um, if you have multiple sheds that you're going to send, first of all, you wanna make sure that the shed is completely dry. So so the number one thing that will destroy the DNA in the shed is moisture. So if it sits in the cage for a while, partially in the water bowl or have feces or something like that, that will degrade the DNA. If you can get the cleanest part, driest part of the shed and set it somewhere, let it completely dry. Once it's completely dry, you can put it in Ziploc bags. So here we have samples that were sent in and we have two different animal numbers. So you can give it a name or a number, just some way for us to report to you. Like in this case, we'll say age 2.5 is male or female. H2.6, male or female. And really all we need, like we saw earlier, is a very small piece to run. You don't need like a full boa shed smooshed into a gallon size mm -hmm. Ziploc bag? Don't need that. However, <laughs> 20 foot retic. Absolutely need <laughs> yeah. that. But yeah, the rule of thumb I give is like about the size of a quarter. So something like this, if I needed to, I can I could do 20 or 30 different extractions. So this is plenty of shed. People are always worried. Um, do I need to send some extra to make sure you have enough? A piece this big will be able to do several tests on if we need to. So it has to be small has to be dry and I assume it should be clean yes. too, not pooped on yes, at all. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I figured I'd mention that <laughs> yes, to help you guys out. Yeah, please don't send us dirty shit. If you're it's sending it to Patrick, it can be pooped. No, no. <laughs> only to Ben. And yet another project that you guys are working on that I think is really cool because you're not busy enough apparently. Testing to determine the difference between a Madagascar ground boa and a Dumeril's boa, right? To see which one a specimen is or if they're a combination of the two. And locality testing on panther chameleons because there's so much controversy on certain panther chameleons like which locality is mine you'll be able to test them too again i assume with shed skins Yes. yes. You can learn just so much from shed skins and I did not realize it until today. And those last two projects are funded by keepers, aren't they? So cool. So yeah, everyone's contributions do get used for the development of these new tests. Well, Ben and Patrick, thank you so much for letting us tour your lab and check out how you do all of these tests and what you're working on as far as future tests go. If people are interested in learning more, they can go to your website, Rare Genetics Inc. Com, right? Yep, yep. And that's where they can find all of the ordering information for where to send sheds 
on how to learn more about what you're doing and for the latest updates especially on like your morph test progress rare genetics on facebook that'd be a great place to follow thank all of you that have already been on the gofundme we really appreciate those those contributions and for sharing the link uh, and also for the last three years we've been doing the sex determination uh, we've had you know lots of submissions come in and that's really helped us build to the point where we can develop more tests uh, especially people on facebook groups it seems like that's where the people have kind of spread the word about the sex determination we really reach out with you know, heartfelt thanks that's awesome love that and i guess one more time thank you guys for watching and thank you as always to our wonderful patreon backers and we'll see you when we're back in wisconsin hooray cold wisconsin <laughs> uh.